Hello and welcome. My name is Kyle for the win and welcome back to the evolution of Call of Duty video. This is episode 5 and today we are going to be taking a look at Call of Duty World at War. One of the most controversial Call of Duty games at its time. As you guys know, Call of Duty 1, 2, and 3 were all World War II shooters. And then Modern War Call of Duty 4 came out, which brought us back to the modern era, or brought us for the very first time to the modern era. And then all of a sudden, we went back to a World at War shooter, or World War II shooter. And for the most part, from what I can remember from old OG YouTubers talk from uh, in talking in just videos, was that this game wasn't very well received initially because of the fact that people were kind of bored of the World War II shooters. And of course, as you guys know, after World at War, we didn't get another World War II shooter or Call of Duty game till 2017, which is the video we'll be covering by probably the end of oh, probably a week from Saturday or the, a week from today. This video is going up. I don't know. I'm not really sure exactly when, but it was a very, very long time, almost 10 years since the last World War II Call of Duty game. So that kind of shows you guys where this game was at its current time. But nonetheless, this game was super, super well received. It just took a little bit of time. It just took a little bit of time because people were like obsessed with Call of Duty 4 because it was just such an innovative game. And World at War was kind of mixed to begin with, but then it became very, very popular very, very quickly, which will lead us into the golden age of Call of Duty, which will be covered on Monday now. World at War is an absolutely amazing game. The multiplayer was fantastic, which I will be covering a little bit later in the video, of course. And the multiplayer and the zombies mode was insane as well, which is which was an insane innovation. And everybody was absolutely super, super excited for this game. But anyways, we're going to play my favorite campaign mission of World at War today, which should be a lot of fun. But let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So this game was amazing. The campaign was fantastic. This game was just super, super, super fun. And we are going to be playing my favorite mission today, which is going to be Vendetta, which is one of the darker missions of this game, to say the least. This game definitely earned its M rating. Now, Call of Duty 4 didn't really earn its M rating too much because it was very graphic. You know, they rated it M because the graphics were better, which means the blood was more real, quote unquote. But this game definitely earned a rated M rating for the dismemberment effect on characters for the graphicness of the campaign. Either way, this game is absolutely amazing. We're going to be playing my favorite mission here today, which is the Russian side of the campaign with my crazy, my favorite character in Call of Duty Zombies or Call of Duty History, Sergeant Reznov. Anyways, I'm not going to waste any more of you guys' time. Let's go ahead and jump to Vendetta. Here we are, Vendetta. One of the darkest missions of Call of Duty history, but my favorite mission of this game, to say the least. This mission is incredible, and you guys will see why here in a little while. I 
need your help. Oh, the soundtrack is so good. Alright, hold on. I need to turn down my sensitivity. It's way, way too high. But this was the first game that introduced a different button layout for console, just in case you guys were wondering. Obviously, I play on Tactical, and yeah, that's kind of something that's interesting. I mean, it's not really interesting, but definitely something that, you know, is definitely different compared to uh, Call of Duty 4 through Call of Duty 1 through Call of Duty 4. He is responsible for the cold blooded murder. Women and children. Not just here, but throughout the motherland. For three days, I have hunted him. For three days, luck alone has saved his wretched life. Sniping your enemy is like hunting any other animal. Fire at the wrong moment, and your chance will be forever lost. Patience. If we reveal our position to Amsel's men, this fountain will be our grave. Now, load your rifle, but hold your fire. Wait until the bombers are directly overhead. The sound of the engines will drown out your shot. Ready? Shoot! Now! Again! Oh, you don't mess with. You don't mess with us, my guys. Excellent aim. You are a natural hunter. Incredible. Reznov is my favorite character in Call of Duty history. For those guys who are wondering. Like him better than Soap. Better like him, be like him better than Price. He's just greatest character ever created, my opinion. My opinion. This way, before they discover the dead. I probably will be silent for most of this mission because Resonance has a lot of cool quotes. Conversations of friends and lovers. No longer. Mark my words, comrade. One day things will change. We will take the fight to their land. To their people. To their blood. This way. Knowing the routines and movements of your prey tips the balance of our hunt. General Amsel is a creature of habit. He inspects each German garrison every day. We can use this building to flank his route. Sounds like a plan, my guy. Dude, now this part of the mission always I always mess up on this part as well
fire again. Get ready to take him out. I was I always can't find this guy. There he is. Did you see him? He knows exactly where we are. I cannot risk it again. It's up to you to find him now. Stay out of the light. He fires. Move. It was just a decoy. Stay focused. Find another piece of cover. Peek again. Peek again, buddy. You you, you won't. Okay, crap. I'm out of I'm out of hold breath. Damn. Okay, where are you gonna go? Oh crap, get down. Keep losing him. There we go. Come on. Taking too long. Is not gonna come out of that window? Come on. Quit dilly dallying. He has you beat. You need to take a different position. why this guy is so freaking hard see i told you i always struggle with this part yes there we go we got him apologize that took me so long what the heck that guy opening the door just sounded like a mystery box what the frick Interesting. German patrol. Let them pass. Come on, Eskan! They found us! We need to leave now! Hit the floor! All right. I think they then they just killed one of their own guys. There we go. I'm not dying over here anymore. No oh, thanks. I'm going. As fast as I can. Oh, mit dem Flammenwerfer verbrennt diese Russenschweine. You were among the dead in the massacre at the square. He was among them, but not one of them. We're about to assault the communication post north of here. Good. Such a move will prevent the German command calling for help. Dimitri and I will provide cover from above. Wait till you hear the screams of dying German. Dimitri, this way. Up the ladder. 
comrades. Okay. This way, comrades. Take positions and wait for the signal. Hold your fire. Do you see the flamethrowers? You must choose your moment. Exploding the fuel tank will incinerate anyone standing nearby. Okay, here we go. <laughs> See, that's why I like him. He's just hilarious. I, just an amazing character. One of the most unforgettable characters in Call of Duty history. For sure. Come on, the kick. There we go, we got him. But now, as you can see from this mission, this mission alone shows you that this game was definitely, definitely earned its rated M rating now. This is one of the, this is a brutal mission for sure within this game, but the first mission of this game will prove to you that, like, will show you for sure that this game is definitely rated M. But anyways. This game I like to follow up with, you know, some of the mechanics from Call of Duty, Call of Duty 1, or Call of Duty 2 and 3 as well, but for the most part, this game is pretty much has its own identity. Wow, there's people up there as well. Nice. Dang it. I'm gonna mess that up till we till we play Modern Warfare 2, I guarantee it. Ooh, the PTRS. Oh, should I should I grab it? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna keep this scope mosing again. Okay, that's 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 a glitch. He has some glitch quotes. There we go. Come on, show yourself. Okay, or not, whatever. <laughs> whatever, dude. Take the shot. Oh, I think I got wrecked. Get wrecked. Oh, crap. There we go. More ammo for my Mosin. Go, go, grenade. Are there any more people around? I mean, obviously, there's more people down here. But, like, I meant, like, above. I don't think there is any, any other people above. Oh, crap. Way ahead of you. Way ahead of you, Reznov. Whoa! No, 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 no. Get down. Don't want to die because I pressed the wrong controls again. There we go. Wait, I think I know where this... I think I know where this machine gun is. It's on the right. Dang it, I can't get him getting a lot of you kick. There we go. There we go. Now, obviously, Reznov just shooting his PPSH will do absolutely nothing. From this far away, because it just won't. It's not a sniper rifle or an AR. But even then, an, an AR wouldn't really do much good from, from this far away either. This would definitely be the best position for a sniper, which is my position. There are so many people. Jeez, man. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, I'm right behind you. Crap. Think we're good? Follow me. I know a perfect sniping position overlooking the command post. All right. Hold fire. We are too close to our goal to reveal our position. There is nothing we can do for our comrades. Their sacrifice will not go. Tried, buddy. <laughs> you, you are a true okay, I guess we can't celebrate yet. Oh crap! I'm lucky I did not die by all those grenades. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That was, by the way, that was Richtofen. I'm going. And there we go, guys. That is going to do it for the campaign portion of this video. Amazing mission. I love it. Every single time I play that mission, I just... I just love it. It is just such a fantastic mission. But anyway, guys, that is going to do it for the campaign portion of this video. I can already tell you guys this is going to be a very, very long video, which I do apologize for. But unfortunately, the way I want to do this series requires videos to be very, very long. But if you have made it, well, I guess this will be only halfway in the video. But the thing, the reason I know it's going to be a long video is because I recorded the multiplayer and the zombies portion of this video first. So that's how I know it's going to be a very, very long video. But if you guys do make it all the way through, thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate it. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump into the multiplayer and the zombies portion of this video. And I'll see you guys all in two seconds. All right, guys, and welcome into the welcome over to PC. As you can see, we are back on PC because I believe we should be able to play a multiplayer match. Now, I'm not positive, but we will see. Now, COD 4, we were able to play a multiplayer match the other day or yesterday. So, I'm thinking we might actually be able to play a game here as well. But I don't think they have the same bot mechanic as they did back in, uh, back in Call of Duty 4. Now, there is this, which is a Nightfire TDM, but I don't think I have... The map pack downloaded but let's just take a look at this multiplayer basically actually i we can't so let's let's just find a game let's just find a game and we'll probably go into a private match and kind of go from there now we'll see if we can join this game i don't have the dlcs installed but i might actually have the dlcs installed but let's go ahead and find out here wow we can let's go man let's give this let's play some world at war on the pc how about and it's hardcore damn it i freaking hate hardcore well it is what it is i suppose but yeah, so this is very, very interesting. Now, this multiplayer is very, very similar to Call of Duty 4's multiplayer. Uh, just that it's back in World War II. So, it actually is kind of funny that it kind of balanced out that way. That Treyarch now has... Okay, well, I got killed from somewhere. Dang it. Why does, why does it say Kyle FTWYT? It shouldn't say that because my Steam account is just FTW. Weird. Very, very weird. And I am dead again. Fantastic. Don't know if I'll be able to be able to play this because I freaking hate hardcore. I hate getting shot from no from completely out of nowhere. 
Okay, I can't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not playing this. No way. Um. Okay. Um. Well, there's this free for all. TDM domination. TDM. Oh, what the frick? There's one right here. Don't know why I couldn't find that one. Well, let's go ahead and jump into this game. I'm actually very, very surprised we can find a game on World at War. Not gonna lie. Oh, it's downloading a mod. Hopefully... It's not anything crazy. Black Ops Killer Cam Bots. Let's just auto-assign and see what's going on. Oh, there's bots in here. That's why. Okay, so... Is it, is it the same sort of multiplayer, though? Like... Like, is it glitched to where we, like, don't get the right kill streaks or... Like, what's the difference here? Is there anything different? Well, we'll find out. Now, again, I hate playing against bots, but hey, at least we can play the OG World at War multiplayer. There we go. Nice. This guy's got dogs for whatever reason. Jeez. This is insane. Run! There we go. Run away. All right, let's call this in. Uh, I guess over there? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see if that gets kills. Yes, I got dogs. Let's go. So, uh, of course, as you guys saw from our video from yesterday, where we played Call of Duty 4. Oh, gosh. Okay, I guess I'm using this. Hit marker. Hit marker. Okay, the Springfield sucks. Never using that gun again. Never using that gun again. But at, but as you guys saw from Call of Duty 4, we got ourselves, or we, there was a, um, the kill streaks were the spy plane, the artillery, and then, of course, the, um, I think Kyle. Then, of course, the attack chopper at the, at the last one. But this game introduced dogs as a kill streak for the first time which was very very cool because nobody i mean let's just be real here for a second uh the crap the attack the attack chopper was good but it just it didn't have the same sort of power and oomph that the, the that the dogs had now and that was the biggest difference of really the entire game was the fact of, of that so I'm thinking we should have ourselves yeah there is a stopping, a stopping power class with marksman beautiful okay um, I freaking hate that we're playing against only bots but this is the only regular TDM that we have so let's just go ahead and call that in now obviously the SVT was in world at or it was in Call of Duty 1 or Call of Duty 2 sorry but again, this game does, did the same thing and introduced, you know, the same uh, mechanics. Okay, come on. Freaking artillery. Ooh, bad aim. My PC noob aim. Oh, cool. A real player. Nice. He's somewhere on the other team. I have no freaking idea where he is, though. Okay, I need to be very, very careful with this gun. But man, does this look good on PC. Now, I don't think this match has a time limit to it. So, we'll play until I get to level 4. And then we'll go ahead and back out. Unfortunately, because I have a ton of fun playing this game. But, uh, I might have mentioned this in the title. But the weird thing is, I'm actually recording the multiplayer and the zombies first. And then moving over to PC to record... To record the campaign. Because I have the campaign completed on PC. There we go, we made it. Should we get one one more round of dogs? I think we should. Oh, and fun fact, Nocturne Toten was right here in the multiplayer. And, fun fact as well, the Nocturne Toten is also in the uh, campaign mode as well. So, Nocturne Toten is in every mode of this game. Let's go, man. Let's call on that artillery over... I'm thinking over here. Which is kind of on me. Run! 
Let's go. We got ourselves some dogs. Let's go, man. Oh, crap. There we go. Give me that gun. Whatever it was. Arasaka. Okay. Whatever. I'll take it. There we go. Let's call on the dogs. Oh, man. Now, if I could be completely honest with you guys for a second. Oh, no. Hit marker. No way. A hit marker. If I could be completely honest with you guys for a second. I kind of prefer World at War over Call of Duty 4. Now, this is coming from somebody who's never played Call of Duty, didn't play either game when they were the main Call of Duty game. But coming back to the games, I actually enjoyed World at War a tad smidge more than I enjoyed Call of Duty 4. And the reason for that, simply enough, is I just like the mechanics in this game a little bit better. Now, it doesn't look quite as good as Call of Duty 4. I must admit that, but but the streaks were better, and the maps were legendary. Now, there were some bad maps in Call of Duty 4. There was not a single bad map in this game, in my opinion. So, I mean, no, I don't have a ton of time play of a uh, ton of play time with this game. But I don't think that really deters from anything. I think the game, you know, I think you can really quickly determine if a Call of Duty game is good or not just based off of how the maps are, even if you've played them a very short amount of time, but, uh, you know, the time to kill was great, even though they brought stopping power and jug back, it's just still a very, very solid game, and overall, I really, really, really enjoyed my experience in Call of Duty 4, but that's just my personal, or in World at War, more than Call of Duty 4, that's just my opinion, though, the games are both fun, they're both pretty solid, balanced Call of Duty games, if I'm not, if I can be completely honest. The only downside, and this must be a big disclaimer, that a lot of you guys may be like, Kyle, what are you talking about? This gun is featured the most overpowered weapon in Call of Duty history with the MP40. And to that, you are absolutely correct. Yes, this weapon, this game did home, did be, was a home to the MP40, which is just the most insane weapon ever in Call of Duty. But, but... Come on. Yes, got him. But, however... Can I call this in yet? I think I should be able to. Nope, I can't call it in yet. Yes! We got the, we got the dogs again. You'll love to see it. Hello. Oh, that did not work out very well. That did not work out very well. But, yeah. And what else, what else did I really like about World at War? I'm trying to think at the moment, but I can't really come up with anything else at the moment. What did I really like about World at War? Weapon balance wasn't great, I will admit that. But what I really liked about the multiplayer, I had something in my head. But I can't remember it now. What was it? <laughs> Why can't I freaking remember? Why is that guy not dying? Hello? Oh, that's what I was going to say. The voice actors in this game. Oh, amazing. Just incredible. Best voice actors we've ever seen. There we go. Got a few hit markers on that guy as well. Game will reset automatically in 45 minutes. So we're, we're not going to finish this game. That's for dang sure. Crap. Get your secondary out. There we go. Oof. All right, well, we can't play this game for too much longer, but I will really quickly. I want to get one more set of dogs. Like, I'm serious this time. One more set of dogs. Uh, there was a lot of stuff I wanted to talk about multiplayer-wise. And now that we have that out of the way, we can go ahead and uh, get one more set of dogs and we can move over to uh, the zombies mode, which is something very, very interesting, which I probably already talked in about in the intro as well. It's very, very weird recording the second part of a video after the... For, uh, after the first part or before the first part of the video makes no sense but that's just kind of how it is because my mic stand my mic stand is a pain in the butt i have to pick it up move it over to record my con over to record pardon me console and then i have to move it back over to record pc it's so frustrating i, I really wasn't really thinking very smartly when i when i bought the When I bought the mic stand that I did, it's just huge. 
What I should have bought. Oh crap. No. Coming from behind. This okay, this guy's a god. That guy's a god. He absolutely juked me out. Okay, I'm gonna get get give myself one more life, and then if we can't get the dogs will go ahead and back out because this we, I mean we just can't play 45 minutes of, of this I can but the video would be just ridiculously long and I don't want it to be ridiculously long it might be ridic ridiculously long anyway but uh yeah and that was our one more life and I'm gonna go ahead and back out unfortunately I had a lot of fun there geez that was a lot of fun but anyways we're gonna go ahead and go over all of the weapons all the perks and all of the other stuff that's new within the multiplayer i keep i forgot to do that yesterday with call of duty 4 i didn't show you guys all the weapons in the game i didn't show you guys all that stuff but anyways for call of duty world at war we had ourselves the first time we had some bolt action rifles now these were extremely popular back in the days of world at war i mean everybody was running around with these weapons they were so much fun because they actually started out with iron sight only and then you could get a scope on them if you use them a lot and sniping was kind of the original the original community of this game back at least on the youtube scene of course there were people who use automatic weapons throughout but we had the springfield the aristocca the mosin nagant which is a fantastic weapon arguably the best rifle in the entire game you have the car 98k and you have the ptrs which is just a, an amazingly fun sniper rifle to use we also had some rifles which consisted of the svt 40 the gear 43 the m1 garand the sdg stg 44 the m1 and the m1 a1 carbine these were not quite as popular as the rifles i don't think as the bolt action rifle sorry but what what was the most popular within this game was the smgs we had ourselves the thompson fantastic smg we had the mp40 the most overpowered weapon in call of duty history everybody was running around with this thing back in world at war how do i know about this because i didn't play during its life cycle well i just know that that's what happened because that's just what i've witnessed through uh you know youtube and being around the youtube scene for a long time and watching og youtubers at the mp40 even when i was playing world at war for a little bit uh, MP40 was just ridiculously powerful. We also have the Type 100 and the PPSH-41, which is an amazing SMG as well. Then we had the machine guns, which consisted of the LMGs in the game. So we had the Type 99, the BAR, which was a fun gun to use in the multiplayer, the plate gun, also known as the DP-28, the MG-42, the FG-42, and the Browning M1919. Super, super fun. And this was also the very, very first World War II shooter where you could pick your classes, you could pick your perks. It doesn't matter if you were on the... Uh, you know the Japanese side the American side you could use whatever weapon you wanted per that group We also had for the pistols. We had the Colt M1911 the Nambu the Walther P38 the Tokarev TT 33 which looks like really really cool aesthetic wise and the 357 Magnum then for the perks or for the primary grenades, we had the frag, the sticky grenade, and the Molotov cocktail. For the uh, secondary grenades, we had the smoke, the tab, and gas, and the flare. Then for the perks, we had all of the same sort of perks that we had back in uh, Black Ops, or in Modern Warfare, sorry. Uh, Call of Duty 4, which basically just give you increased, uh, you know, a bazooka, a satchel charge, special grenades, etc., bomb squad, band oiler, same sort of thing from previous Call of Duty games. We also had for the perk 2s, the pretty much the same sort of thing that we had back in the day, uh, you know, in Call of Duty 4, we had stopping power, fireworks, which gives you higher explosive weapon damage. We have flak jacket, we have gas mask, juggernaut, camouflage, sleight of hand, shades, double tap, and overkill. Shades is the most underrated or well obviously it was not a very good perk but it's the coolest perk ever in call of duty history i don't care i mean we have a badass guy in aviators who will protect us from flares which i don't think anybody ever used but hey it was still cool and it was still there we also had ourselves deep impact extreme conditioning steady aim toss back second chance marty dumb fireproof dead silence iron lungs and reconnaissance i've used almost zero of these perks because i think the highest rank i've gotten to in world at war was about rank 20 something so yeah really didn't get much exposure to any of these other perks but these are very cool toss back fireproof and reconnaissance very very interesting then we actually had vehicle perks because vehicles actually returned to this game as well which were the tanks we had water cooler we had greased bearings we had ordnance training lead foot and coaxial machine gun so very very cool there super super innovative multiplayer actually not super super innovative but it was still an innovative multiplayer nonetheless because it added a couple of things that call of duty 4 didn't have so now that we have all of that out of the way we can go ahead and look through the challenges once again these were obviously still there as well and we also had 
a prestige mode once again, just like we did back in Call of Duty 4. And overall, this game didn't really go too far away from Call of Duty 4. It stayed very, very similar to Call of Duty 4 in pretty much every way. But it was still a very, very good, very, very good game nonetheless. Now, if I go over here to start a new server, we can go ahead and take a look at all of the maps. So we had Airfield, we had Asylum, we had Bonsai, we had Battery, or these are DLC maps. Uh, we had, let me see if I can remember all of the just regular maps. We had Airfield, we had Asylum, we had, I think Breach was a, no, I don't think Breach was a standard map. We had Castle, we had Cliffside, we had Cor or Corrosion wasn't one. We had Courtyard, which is one of the best maps of all time. We had Dome, we had Downfall, we had Hangar, we had Macon Night, or Macon, just regular Macon. We had Outskirts, which is a huge map, but it still played really, really well in this game. We had Roundhouse, I think was a base map. Please correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comments. We also had Silo, we had Upheaval, and those were all the base maps. And all the base maps in this game, as I said, were really, really, really good map. But anyways, that is absolutely everything multiplayer-wise. It was a little bit longer than I would have wanted it to do, wanted it to be, because there's no limit on the multiplayer. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and jump into a zombies game. We're gonna go ahead and jump into or go and play five rounds, and I will see you guys in the zombies game. Alright, guys, welcome. Welcome to Call of Duty Zombies. Now, this is the first time that zombies ever came into call of duty as you guys know and is just the most innovative just insane thing ever because how you got how you unlocked call of duty zombies also known as nazi zombies in world at war was you had to play the entire campaign and once you finished the campaign you got thrown into this if you watched all the credits you got thrown straight into the zombies mode and the zombies mode was something that from what I've heard from people who originally started playing zombies said fear is the best way they could have described this because I mean imagine you know you're just playing the campaign you finish the ending to one of the best campaigns ever and all of a sudden you're thrown into this where you see a shadowy figure running at you through the dark in the fog and you're like okay what where what is this where am I and then all of a sudden you see these dead soldiers coming out of the fog and there's the the moon there's the fog obviously this map isn't very scary nowadays because it's just you know it's og but back then back in the world at war days this map was like holy moly this is freaky and actually fun fact back in world at war in nocturne and toten can or uh, training was not a strategy that people did people did not train training wasn't really a thing i th don't think until shino numa was when people learned how to train but until that map people did not did not train they just they camped and, I, and i'll show you guys the camping spot where people camped for the most part on this map or what they would do is they would have uh they would you know they would be to an area and be like okay you face this way you face this way i'll face this way and you face that way and we'll try and, and we'll try and survive and you know people you know and that obviously wasn't the best way to survive but that's just how people played it back then which is really really cool and this is actually where some YouTubers fell in love with zombies, where they would, you know, they would jump on and they would play it for hours and hours and hours a day to get to round five and die and then get to round five and die and so on and so forth. Because high rounds wasn't a thing either back then. And I don't even know if there was even a zombies YouTuber back then because it was just a side project that really nobody cared about. Most people were, you know, focused on the uh, multiplayer side of things at this point. But, I mean, you have to take it with a grain of salt on that and, you know, know that YouTube wasn't really as big as it is now. I mean, the fact that, you know, I have 417 subscribers. If I had 417 subscribers back in 2008 or 2007 when Call of Duty 4 came out, like, that was a that was a channel that was getting somewhere. And, like, obviously now, like, 2 million is, like, you know... 100,000 is super, super common and everything like that, but, you know, back in the day, back during this game's life cycle and stuff, you know, 100 subscribe, like, 100 subscribers was good, and, you know, where my channel is right now would be incredible for that time of year, or for that period of time, but, yeah, this game, unfortunately, though, as I said in my multiplayer part, wasn't quite as well received as uh, it could have been, as, as people, you know, 
as people wanted it to be. Now, this there might have been a repeating thing here between the uh, uh, campaign part of the video and this part of the video, but uh, essentially, people were like, cool, we got away from World War II because we had, you know, especially the OGs, you know, they were like, well, we got a World War II game got a World War II game for three years in a row, for three titles in a row, then you moved to the Modern Warfare setting, and now you're putting us right back to the World War II setting. And people were like, eh, I'm not really feeling that. People really didn't like the multiplayer that much in World at War either for a while. And actually, you know, the first, for you know, this is kind of crazy to say now, especially because uh, for the most part, for the last couple of years anyways, most people have stopped playing the Infinity Ward game and moved back to the, Infin uh, the Treyarch game. Like, for example, a lot of people did not play Modern Warfare this year and went back to Black Ops 4. But in, you know, in 2007 and 2008, people were like, I don't really want to play World at War. I don't really like this game that much. And they went over and played Call of Duty 4. They went back and played Call of Duty 4 because they didn't want another World War II shooter. Just kind of a fun fact for you guys about that. But as I said, my personal opinion with my experience about, you know, 10 years after the game came out, or not 10 years after the game came out, probably, uh, you know, I'd say about 2000, 2013, 2014. I prefer World at War over Call of Duty 4. Just my personal preference. You know, I think they're both great Call of Duty games. They're definitely uh, A to B tier Call of Duty games, multiplayer-wise, campaign-wise, etc. But yeah, in my personal opinion, though, I prefer World at War over Call of Duty 4. You know, I love the multiplayer maps better. I like the atmosphere of it better. I like the zombies mode a lot, and the campaign was fantastic as well. But that's just my personal opinion. They're both, as I said, they're both great games. They're pretty much... They are essentially very, very close in rating. But yeah, and, and you know, if you look at, you know, back in World at War, though, this zombies mode was a full-fledged side mode. There was no, like, there was no... You know, it's not, it wasn't as big as it was. They were, you know, I think if I remember correctly, now I'm not positive if this was the case, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, I need to get out of here and get upstairs. Now, I'm pretty sure what they, they, what they did was their inspiration behind zombies was, it was just supposed to be a side mode that they really weren't going to be take too seriously. But then as you guys know, it completely just blew up and completely took off. And I think... That's why they made Verruckt, which was, of course, the DLC one of this map of this game. But again, I'm not positive if that's actually the case or not. You please correct me down below in the comments if I'm wrong on that. For those of you OGs who may have come ha may have come across this video, um, I'm not positive. You'll have to let me know. If I mean, you may not even know because who actually knows what was going on in the minds of Treyarch? But I believe that. This was just supposed to be a side mode. It wasn't really supposed to be taken too seriously. It wasn't supposed to, you know, explode the way it did, but it did explode. And that's why they obviously created, you know, DLC 2, 3, and 4 of this game. And, or DLC, yeah. DLC 1, 2, and 3 of this game. Fun fact, this game did not have a DLC 4. Anyways, this was the OG camping spot. This was where people would play this map. They would sit here, and they would sit here and camp camp at the beginning of this game but i think actually some people might have actually played with their sniper strategy you know sniping zombies off the top here having somebody protect their back i think that might have been how people used to play which is just kind of insane to me but that's you know coming from somebody who started playing zombies in black ops 2 but just a lot of nostalgia for this game you know this this game is where call of duty zombie started is where uh, you know, we're, we're, we're getting close to the golden era of Call of Duty, which I will cover tomorrow or on Monday, which will be Modern Warfare 2, which is what well, I will, you guys already know, if you guys made it this far in the video, you guys already know I'm going to title it the, the beginning of the golden age of Call of Duty because that was the game that made it, that was the golden age of Call of Duty was that game, was Modern Warfare 2, but you know, this was still, you could still consider Call of Duty 4 the Golden Age, but the only reason I didn't title Call of Duty 4 the beginning of the Golden Age was because, no, and we're dead. That was kind of intentional, but anyways, I wanted to make it to round 4, round 5 in every single Zombies map, 
the st st starting zombies map. I'm not going to do like a round 30 run or anything because that's just way too long. I mean, I think this section of the video has already been like 20 minutes or so and then we're going to play a campaign mission. So very, very long here. Very, very long. But hopefully you guys enjoyed a look at Call of Duty World at War, which, as I said, I think is the better version of Call of Duty 4. In my personal opinion but overall call of duty 4 and call of duty 5 also known as world at war were very very similar were huge innovations to the call of duty franchise and call of duty would not be anywhere anywhere where it is now if it weren't for call of duty 4 and world at war i can almost guarantee that but anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed the video i've had so much fun recording this series for you guys playing call of duty 1 2 3 4 and now world at war i've had it just a blast it's been so much fun and i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did like ratings i was appreciated if you want to check out all my other previous call of duty world at war or evolution of call of duty videos i will link them we'll have them linked down below in the playlist in the description as well as my previous video which will be at the end of the video and i'll see you guys all on another evolution of call of duty where we'll be covering modern warfare 2 on monday see you guys very very soon